But witchcraft comes in so many flavours. Every culture on the planet practices a form of witchcraft. Witchcraft at its core is a practice of magic and no one owns magic. Many blessings. For those who don't know who I am, I am Lady Amaris. I am the leader of my coven, the Circle of Hecker, and I've been practicing magic for over 30 years. Wow. Yes, it has been a good while since I started out on the path, but I still remember what it's like. And uh, so here are 13 things that I think new witches should know. Number one, research, research, research. Start with what interests you and go from there. Um, when I started out, witchcraft information was not easy to find, especially in Perth, Western Australia. And I'm a little jealous of new witches who these days, there's so much accessible information and in a way that can be good and bad. So having so much choice of information can be overwhelming and not all information is good quality. So your mission is to learn to discern. Read as much as you can from different point of views, different traditions. Look at the history and the historical information surrounding that uh, tradition. Don't just read one book and think you know it all. Knowledge is power and the more you know, the more you grow. So try and make sure your research is well-rounded and don't believe everything you read just because it's written in a book. Anyone can write a book these days, so learn to discern good quality information from fantasy and fluff, which will come in time. Number two, learn the foundations and practice them. Witchcraft is a practice, and as such, there are some things that you will find are core skills that need to be cultivated to practice effectively. Different traditions will have different emphasis on you know, which skills are more important to them. The first one, meditation. Now, this does not have to take the form of you sitting cross-legged and chanting OM, nor does it require you to empty your mind and think of nothing. You can go for a walk in nature, sit and focus on some clouds in the sky. You can do some Tai Chi. Whatever it is, it's about breathing, being in the moment, concentrating on one thing, and quietening the mind. The other side of meditation is focus exercises. So keeping your attention on one thing, such as a candle or a thought, and pulling yourself back when your focus wanders. The aim of this is to lengthen the time before you lose focus. The next is visualization and now this can be hard for many people and like meditation there are different ways that people approach it. I have a few videos on this and I think I will revisit the subject because uh, I find it can be a stumbling block for many new witches. Cleansing and banishing. Learn how to effectively cleanse a space and yourself how to banish an energy. This is one of the things that you need to practice until it's in your DNA, until you can do it without thinking. It's like muscle memory, so that in the future, if you are on the spot and need to banish something, you can do it without just staring like a deer in the headlights. The next is energy. How to feel it, how to move it, how to control it, and ways to generate it, as well as strengthening your own witch power. The next one is divination. Start to work on some form of divination, and it doesn't have to be tarot cards. There are pendulums, runes, dice, I Ching, throwing bones, scrying, tea leaves, 
Magic 8-Ball, you name it, someone has used it for divination. Give them a go. Find the method that gels with you and work it. Use it to help open up your intuition, lift the veil of the unseen in situations, and expand your knowledge of yourself. Now, I know for some, all of this sounds boring. Can I just skip over all of that and get to the good stuff? Sure, you can do whatever you want. But believe me, spending the time cultivating and honing these skills will mean the greater appreciation of all things witchy in the future. Financial cost. Flashy tools are nice, but not necessary. Now, the internet, especially social media, has given everyone an unrealistic expectation of a lot of things witchy. Right now, it is fashionable and many mainstream businesses are jumping on the bandwagon selling witchy-inspired knickknacks and such for those who want that witchy aesthetic. And most that feel that they need all the things before they can start. Now, don't get me wrong, I love looking at altar tours, uh, witchy tool halls, you name it. But many of those are from people who have been practicing for a while and have amassed lots of stuff over time. If you can afford it, great. But having all the witchy things does not make you win at witchcraft or make you a better witch for that matter. It can be a real hindrance to new witches as they believe that they can't do this or that until they have that particular tool or a particular herb. No, witchcraft does not need to be expensive and you don't need all the things to get started. Use what you have around you, the stones in your backyard or a park that's near you, leaves, sticks, herbs from the garden or from your kitchen cabinet. A kitchen knife can be used for magic as well. Things from second-hand stores or say a plate or cup from Kmart. Candles from a supermarket or discount store. Use what works. A pentagram printed on something does not make it magical. You do. By using the item whereby over time it becomes a magical object. You can make your tools, wands are the easiest. While, while you do, you can put your energy and intention into it. Remember, you don't need all the things straight away. Take your time and get what you need or what you like or when you can afford it. Books can be expensive as well. There are a few things that you can do to get over this. Libraries sometimes have a lot of spiritual books that you can borrow, about crystals and herbs and such. Look at book reviews and buy the books that have the most bang for the buck. Now, I like to touch my books, but physical books can be expensive. So e-books can be a cost-effective way of getting around this in the beginning. But I would suggest if you love a book, when you can afford it, purchase a physical copy. Spells and rituals, when to start. Most people, when they become interested in witchcraft, fall into two camps. The ones that need to know everything before they start, and the ones that know nothing and blunder through anyway. Most have their pros and cons. Yes, you should research before you start and have a bit of an idea about what you're doing. And the big one, why you're doing it. Why are you doing the spell? Is this the best way of going about it? Do I need to do the spell or is a mundane approach the better solution? Have you researched the spell? Um, what ingredients are going into it? the moon phase or the planet energies that you will be accessing. Do you know why they're being used? Cool. Then go ahead, give it a try. The ones that just blunder through straight away, great. You're getting your hands dirty, but do you know what you're doing? Why you're doing it? 
And do you have the right intentions, the energy and the focus for that spell or ritual? And have you just bitten off more than you can chew? The thing here is don't be afraid to do the spell or ritual. It can be one of the most exhilarating times of your witchy life, that first spell. But start small. Don't go running ahead and getting into the juicy stuff and winding up getting into trouble. It's kind of like learning how to drive a car. You have to learn the basic road rules. Then you have to learn how to physically drive the car. Normally learners have a speed limit that they have to follow uh, as they practice how to safely drive without hurting themselves and others around them. Then when they are ready and skilled enough, they can, if they like, learn how to drive a rally car, a high performance race car or a truck. You don't just hop into a race car and start driving without at least knowing what you are doing and how to control the vehicle. Same with witchcraft. I know it seems sexy and mysterious to work with spirits, daemons and deities, but if you don't know what you are doing and you have not mastered the basics, you are likely to just get your head bitten off. Please don't call upon anything you are not strong enough to banish. Perfection is impossible. Witchcraft can be messy. You can research, study and read a thousand books, but the real learning is in the doing. Witchcraft can be messy. There are herbs and oils, candles, dirt, stones, hair and fluids, and you will not know what works for you until you try. No two practices are the same and comparing yourself to another's practice is never wise. And waiting for the perfect time, the perfect tool, the perfect setup is just stunting your growth as a witch. Perfection is not achievable. It is stagnation. Get in there. Get your hands dirty, try things, experiment, fail and then try again another way. Learn and grow from your mistakes. Simple spells can be more effective than big elaborate ones. More is not better. You can get a lot done with very little. You don't need all the bells and whistles and just because the spell came from a grand grimoire does not mean it will work for you. This forms part of your research into spell crafting. Look at spells online, in books and uh, in videos. What are the common ingredients that are being used in these common spells and why are they being used? Then you ask yourself, do I need all of that guff or can I pare it down to its core components? Do I need all the pomp and ceremony? Do I need to cast an elaborate circle? Have 20 coloured candles, five gold rings and a partridge in a pear tree? <laughs> the thing is, bigger is not always better. And if you get results, then why do you need more? This all will come with time. You may have to do the elaborate spell to get the fundamentals and to learn the skills needed for spells and rituals in general. Then you can tweak to suit your style. The thing to note is you need to know the rules before you can break the rules. Safety first. Well, there is the obvious, never leave a candle unattended, don't bite off more than you can chew. Know your limits. Know the protocols when calling on deities, spirits, daemons for the first time. Understand, know and learn the herbs you are working with, the doses, the effects and the contraindications. When working with essential oils, these can be harmful if used excessively. Understand which oils and herbs can be harmful to pets, children and when pregnant. Same can be said with burning incense and uh, doing any smoke rituals. Know that children and animals don't really work that well with uh, smoke and incense. But something I don't hear people talking about 
is safety from other people. Now this can take the form of practicing shielding and protection work, but it can really be more mundane than that. What, what's the meme? Uh, spirits don't scare me, but the living do. <laughs> when you are new to the craft, it's great. It's spiritual. You want to learn all that cool witchy stuff and interact with other spiritual witchy people. Yay! <sighs> That's great. But please keep your head on straight. Just because someone is in a spiritual environment, be it a witch, a teacher, a healer, a psychic, what have you, does not automatically mean that they are a good person or have your best interests at heart. Many prey on people new to spirituality with unsolicited requests to give you a psychic reading, um, a healing or even um, pressuring you to become their student. Some are just straight up predators. Use your gut intuition. Don't do anything that makes you feel uncomfortable or be pressured into doing anything with the if you were really spiritual you would. Remember, being in a spiritual community does not automatically mean that you are good. The next thing is going out into the wilderness, into nature for rituals, or just to be one with nature. Be safe. In Australia, we have snakes, meat ants the size of small dogs, spiders as big as dinner plates, oh, and drop bears. So you need to be mindful of where you are and what you're doing and what's around you. Make sure someone knows where you are and what time you were due back. And if possible, try not to go out alone as it's not just animals to watch out for, but people. Not everyone is nice. Being careful also relates to looking for a coven. You are new and you find a coven in your area and you are worried that it's the only chance that you will get to learn some real witchcraft. Stop and wait. There is no need to start in a coven straight away. I didn't. I have a video coming up in regards to things that you should look out for when searching for a coven, so keep an eye out. But suffice to say, you don't need a coven straight away, or at all for that matter. Haters and gatekeepers. You are never going to please everyone and there is always someone that will tell you you are doing it wrong. Each to their own. What's the saying? Hate is gonna hate. Most of the time these people feel a lack of control in their lives and feel that telling others what they can and cannot do gives them that control. Others in my experience develop this need for control after coming from or growing up in an organized religion and then practicing some variation of Wicca. Wicca is seen by most as the religion of witchcraft uh, and they forget that Witchcraft is a craft and does not have dogma. There are different cultures and flavours of witchcraft. Wicca is only one flavour. Not hating on Wicca. It's just an observation. Gatekeeping can be the same. Now, there are many traditions that are closed. Family traditions, such as forms of Strega and others that require initiation into the system before you can practice. But witchcraft comes in so many flavours. Every culture on the planet practices a form of witchcraft. Witchcraft at its core is a practice of magic and no one owns magic. So if you are interested in a tradition, research and study and have an understanding of the culture and history around that flavour of witchcraft. And be mindful and respectful of other cultures that use magic. Don't let the Karens bully you and intimidate you or make you doubt yourself. Their way is not your way and your way is not theirs and that is what makes witchcraft great. Witchcraft is a personal practice. And as we are all different, 
so is the way we practice. Take your time. It is not a race. The path you tread is a long and winding one that lasts a lifetime, maybe more. You will never know everything about a particular subject in the craft. There is always more to learn. As we tread the path, we are continually switching from student to teacher and back again. As we come to the realisation that we have come so very far and we still have so much to learn. It is a crooked path, a winding path, not a paved freeway. The path winds and sometimes backtracks over itself, showing new perspectives from old footprints. It's not about getting everything, knowledge, power, enlightenment straight away with just the utterance of this special incantation. It's the journey on the path, the blood, sweat and tears, the wisdom gained from doing the work, from treading the path. Don't rush, take your time, look at the scenery and stop to smell the roses once in a while. Intention is not all there is to magic. It's all about the intent, that's all you need. I've heard this quite a lot and I think it comes from a more new age influence than an old witchcraft influence. Intention is part of it, but it isn't everything. How many times have you heard someone say, mm, well, I didn't intend that to happen. Intention is part of the recipe, but it is not all of it. Firstly, you need to look at the possible results of your spell and the easiest way it will manifest in your life, as magic follows the path of least resistance. Say it is a money spell and you're thinking, hoping, uh, I don't know, uh, a lottery win or money pouring from the sky. Um, what happens is, most of the time, that you're asked to do overtime at work. Or the old chestnut, you have an accident and the insurance payout is what you asked for in your spell. Alternatively, you do a spell to get a bossy or toxic team leader to leave you alone at work and then you end up losing the job. Clearly not what you intended. The intention part of your spell is your goal and the processes that you use to weave that into manifestation as closely as possible to your desired outcome. The other part of what people are talking about when they are saying intent is the energy put into that spell. Your own deities, nature, the universe. But it's also the energy that you put into it after the spell. Are you working towards the goal in your mundane life or using real world actions? If it is a job spell, are you sending out applications? A love spell, are you getting out there and going on dates? Or are you expecting Prince or Princess Charming to climb up to your lofty tower and save you from the single life? A weight loss spell, are you eating healthy? and exercising or are you sitting on the couch waist deep in potato chips expecting the spell to do all the work for you magic travels the path of least resistance don't make yourself the resistance the third part of the intent umbrella term is focus and visualization Results will be spotty at best if you have the attention span of a goldfish and your visualisation skills are poor. So when other witches tell you that all you need is intent, it's kind of true if you are a master at weaving your goal into physical existence with just focused energy and visualisation. Not many of those witches around, and they have developed that skill over years of dedicated practice. For the non-demigods amongst us, using something physical helps us focus that intention into the physical world. 
Now this can be as easy and cost effective as using a stone from the garden, a leaf or pen and paper. If you want to get a little fancy, then you can use a candle or herbs and roots that align with your intention and add power to your spell. This anchors the energy into the physical world and helps make it real. Using just intention alone runs the risk of your spells just staying in the mental realm and never truly manifesting. This is the same as performing a ritual and a spell using herbs and candles, spell jars and whatnot without focused intent. At the end of the day, all it seems to amount to is some expensive cosplay. Deity, spirits, ancestors, oh my. Again, you look through social media and everyone has a deity. I work with Hecate, I work with the Morrigan, I work with Hell, Medusa, Hearn, the flying spaghetti monster. Everyone seems to have one and I'm practicing witchcraft, so I must need one too. No, not really. Many witches don't work with deity. And like I've said before, you don't need to have all the best bells and whistles right at the beginning. Let your path progress naturally and organically. If a deity makes themselves known or you are drawn to one, then research everything that you can about them and then you can write a ritual to contact them. I suggest forming it like you are having a very important person over for tea. You're going to be formal, have uh, the things that you know that this person likes, and you're going to be polite and respectful. Don't expect to see a result straight away with your contact. The deity may be checking you out and looking at what your commitment is, or you may have to develop your intuition a little bit more to hear them more clearly. So it may take a few attempts at communication before you see a connection. This would be the same process with spirits and ancestors. Now the deity, spirit or ancestor may not want to work with you at that time or at all. And that's cool. The one thing that I will say is that personally, as a witch, I work with deity, spirits and my ancestors. I don't worship them and that's a huge difference but again each to their own you do what makes you comfortable and is right for your practice grimoires books of shadows and journals write stuff down what you are learning your spells meditations experiences not only will it help you to remember the information that you are learning about but it comes as a record of your journey as a witch. So at times, when you feel stuck and you feel like that you're not progressing at all, you can look back and see how much you have actually learned and how far you have come along your path. Writing down spells and rituals, the results and the failures, helps you to tweak and refine your path and truly make it your own. Now, like most things, social media you have some witches with beautiful bound grimoires or books of shadows and absolute works of art and as a new witch starting your book this can be very intimidating as you may have the idea that it needs to be perfect which results in you not writing in your book at all for fear of messing it up well you don't need a fancy book to start any notebook will do. I have many, many notebooks I call my books of scratch, filled to the brim with witchiness, posted notes, photocopied reference images, leaves, flowers, you name it. I also have folders full of quick reference material, uh, ones for rituals, ones for spells. Um, so creating and having a grimoire straight away is not necessary especially if the whole idea of creating one stresses you out. Start small 
and as you go your style will evolve and go with what works best for you how you organize your information and the information you feel should go into your grand grimoire don't be a sheep be a goat it is so easy to get caught up in the latest witchy trend. Social media is rife with this. TikTok, anyone? Creating a monkey see, monkey do effect. This saying refers to learning something by mimicry without understanding why it works or concerned about the consequences. Just because everyone seems to be doing it does not mean it's right for you or has a place in your practice. Take the Western world's obsession with burning California white sage for absolutely everything. House feels funky, burn some sage. I think I see a ghost, burn some sage. It's Wednesday, burn some sage. Dog farted, burn some sage. Seriously, put the sage down and slowly back away. Sage does not work in all situations. Besides, there are cheaper and more effective things out there that can be used instead of sage. Hauling your crystals out so they can charge under the full moon. I'm not knocking it, and it's nice if it works for you, but for me, crystals are found in the earth. Uh, they don't go out for a stroll on the full moon to recharge and then dive back into the earth again when they're done. Maybe if you feel they need a charge, try a dirt bath instead of a moon bath and give them some alone time. My crystal's like that. Maybe yours will too. All I'm saying is it's nice to belong and doing what is in vogue and trending gives us a sense of being part of something. Try not to follow the herd understand what you're doing and why and cultivate your own practice follow your own path for me a witch is someone who thinks for themselves and is not swayed by the peer pressure of popular culture this is one that i have not seen anyone talk about when giving tips and advice to beginners but i know it is one of the most important Coming from what is known as the Witch's Pyramid or the Four Pillars of the Magus, to know, to will, to dare, and to keep silent. Social media seems to have blown the keep silent part out of the water. Talk, 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 let me tell you something, and I just want to say this. Many voices all fighting to be heard and most not really thinking about what they're saying and forgetting or maybe they don't know that in silence there is power. Now I'm not talking about the silence of not saying anything when someone is being harmed or yourself being harmed. I'm talking about not talking and just listening. A fool is known by his speech and a wise man by silence. As a young witch, I was counseled to keep my silence, talk little and listen much. One big thing I have seen on social media is talking about spells that you have done the night before and showing the picture. Back in my day, this was just unheard of and you must remember that it was not long ago that talking about doing a spell was not good for your health. It is still like that today in many countries. Now I don't see a problem with someone showing a working if they like but at least wait until it is manifested. Why? Well as I've said previously, not everyone has your best interest at heart and your spell is in the beginning phases of pulling at the strings of the universe and weaving a new possibility into existence. It is at a vulnerable time in the life of the spell. Telegraphing you've just done a spell for something leaves that spell open to outside tampering, either from, say, a family member praying for your soul Maybe someone out of jealousy sending you a little malocchio to your spell. 
well-intentioned friends and family constantly asking you, has your spell worked yet? Oh, don't worry, it will. And thus surrounding yourself and them with the energy of doubt. Or it could be just a bored witch who has nothing better to do than mess with your spell, just because they can. On the spiritual side, some of the benefits of being silent is the quieter you are, the more you hear. You become aware of things in your environment, dangers, opportunities, the magic and wonder of it all, which you miss if you are too busy talking. Silence gives us a chance to get to know and understand ourselves and not worry or overthink everything. A chance for our creativity and intuition to speak without the constant chatter of our conscious minds drowning it out. Insights require a quiet mind because they themselves are quiet. Entering the silence cuts off the constant flow of information and chattering thoughts, allowing us to reset, to recalibrate, to think better and clearer, to question for a second and reconnect with our core. I suggest regularly spending a day or at least a couple of hours switching off from electronic media, sitting alone or sitting in nature somewhere and just being silent. Well, that's my 13 tips. Uh, I have a few more that I've thought of, so uh, I'll probably film another one of these in the future. Please keep an eye out for my video on things to consider when looking for a coven, which will be out soon. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you have any other tips for new witches, please put them in the comments below. And um, many blessings.